Alrighty, lights, camera, action. Now, when I bring up cinema line cameras, you're probably thinking of Komodo Reds, Blackmagic Ursas, the list goes on and on. But you don't have to be spending a big old budget in order to get some good quality video. Of course, if you have the budget for it, great. But if you're a beginner or a seasoned veteran looking for a stellar camera system at a very competitive price, you really can't go wrong with the Sony FX30 series line of cinema cam. All right, let's get it out of the way right now. The first major difference between, of course, the FX30 and the FX3 is gonna be the sensor size. On your left, you have the FX30. That's gonna be an APS-C crop sensor, whereas on the right, you have the FX3 with the full frame sensor. The sensor sizes will make a huge difference, especially in the low light department and how footage will look depending on if you already have a suite of full frame or crop lenses. With the crop sensor of the FX30, you might notice a little bit more grain and noise compared to its bigger brother due to the smaller sensor size, so definitely keep that in mind. Regardless, the FX30 is still a pretty capable system in certain low light situations. Sensor size aside, externally there isn't really too much of a big difference between the FX30 and the FX3. Button layout is pretty much the same, so if you're moving from an FX3 to an FX30, or if you're using the FX30 as a B cam and have an FX3 as your A cam, you're going to feel right at home within regards to where everything is laid out at. When it comes to the lens lineup, you have a whole plethora of lenses to choose from from the Sony E-mount lens lineup of lenses, to include E and FE. Alrighty, it's time to talk numbers. So the long story short is that the FX30 can shoot up to 4K 120 frames max at 10-bit 422 which is a pretty big deal. Of course, it also has every option in between to suit your shooting conditions. Just be aware if you're shooting at higher rates to have a fast enough card that will be able to write all of that data. Speaking of data, let's go ahead and talk about media. The FX30, just like the FX3 and the A7S III, rocks a two-card slot that supports both SD and newer CFexpress Type A cards. You're definitely going to want to have those Type A's, especially if you're shooting with very data-intensive filming. Shooting at 10-bit 422 at 600 megabytes per second on Sony's S-Log3 color profile, which is also an available color profile for the FX30 to pull the most colors and dynamic range, is one such great example. Of course, S-Log3 is a color profile that will require a bit more work in post-production, but it'll yield the best in terms of color that you'd like in your shots. In the audio department, if you purchase the FX30 with the audio handle, it'll open up two XLR inputs and a 3.5mm input as well. You want your audio to be just as on point as your video, and that handle will achieve that. And lastly, for the other ports, you have one full HDMI that can output raw signal, your standard 3.5mm input and monitor jacks accordingly, and a micro USB for multi accessory use and a USB Type C for both power supply and computer connectivity. A neat thing about the camera is that you can actually utilize the FX30 as a camera source for your computer. A perfect camera for those wanting to use it for streaming as well. Alrighty, and that's the rundown on the FX30 line of cinema cameras from Sony. Again, it's not too far off from the FX3, but in terms of price, it's a pretty big difference. And if you're wanting something that's very cost effective and really great in terms of footage and video quality, you really can't go wrong with the FX30. Now, of course, the pricing for the camera will always vary. If you wanna go ahead and check out our pricing, go ahead and go to our website at bnccamera.com where you can see the full price listing. Of course, I'm none other than Raf from BNC Camera, and I'll catch you guys in another video.